Hello students, this is Professor McDermott. I'm going to be your teacher for History 2111 this fall, um, the U.S. History Survey from 1877 to the present. So we'll start at the end of the historical period called Reconstruction, and we'll go up through the presidency of uh, Ronald Reagan and uh, the end of the Cold War. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll be posting these uh, little videos regularly throughout the course, so please keep an eye out for them. I was very, very happy to see several familiar names from previous courses on the course roster this time, but uh, whether or not I've had you as a student before, I look forward to um, getting to know all of you and working with all of you on this course uh, this fall. Uh, you'll find I'm very accessible, and uh, especially uh, the best way to contact me is probably through email, but uh, you can also call me uh, during my office hours, and my email, my phone number, and my office hours are listed on the syllabus, or you could even Skype me uh, during my office hours and uh, be happy to, to chat with you that way. Uh, but I, I, I'm good about monitoring my emails, so um, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or need any help, or just want to discuss history at any point, I, I, I'm delighted to communicate with you. Um, well, you're already watching this video, and that is a very good sign. Um, otherwise, all I can say is please, please read the syllabus and the order of assignments posted in the Start Here folder from beginning to end very carefully, and let me know if you have any questions. I, I think those two documents will answer most of your questions but I'm very happy to clarify if anything is um, confusing. Um, I really want to focus for the rest of this little video on uh, discussions and how the discussion board is going to work for this course because I know it's quite unusual and probably unlike anything that you've experienced in any other online course the way I have this set up. But um, this really to me is the heart and soul of the course and I've set the course up this way very intentionally because um, to me just reading a textbook or even just listening to a lecture or listening to a professor talk is pretty dull and not really a very good way to get to the truth. I really believe that we only discover truth through dialogue and through um, exchanging different perspectives and so um, that's why the discussions will actually count uh, more in your final grade than any other component of the course. And so I really hope everyone will give their utmost to these discussions, not just to get a grade, but really in order to learn something out of them. Uh, I think you'll find it very interesting and engrossing if you let yourself get started. Now in module one, the first section of the course, you'll have two different types of discussion assignments. The first one is a self-introduction. This is just a kind of little getting to know you exercise. You may have had something like this before. And essentially, we're just going to post a short description of yourselves, yourself, your interests, your likes and dislikes. Um, and everyone is assigned to a group. There are three groups. Everyone has been assigned to a group. Um, I've listed what group you're all in in uh, a post on the news board uh, on the course page, and I'll send that out via email too. Um, so this first assignment is designed to get to know your group members. So once you've posted your little mini bio of yourself, I want you to read everyone else's posts and then pick five people that you feel like you have something in common with and reply to their um, posts. Um, and just talk about what you have in common. If there's nobody you feel like you have anything in common with, you can just respond to someone um, and talk about something you found interesting in that person's post, okay? So that's the self-introduction assignment. Um, the other uh, discussion or interactive assignment we have this module is based on documents that your group will, a document that each group will read about this topic of manifest destiny, westward expansion in the U.S. in the 19th century. So each group has a different document, and then each group will have three questions based on that document, which was written at the time we're studying. It's a primary source document, as we historians call it. Um, and so, basically, as individuals first, you will individually post your answer to the questions. Um, you will um, start a new thread and make 
a post answering the question. Um, then that's really when it gets interesting. Uh, well, first, before I, before I explain that, you must make your first post answering all three questions individually by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, August 20th. And every module, there's going to be a deadline for your initial posts, your first post on each question. And the reason for that is that if we didn't have a deadline, a lot of people would just post on the last day of the module and then we would never be able to get a discussion going, which would be a waste of your time and not a very good learning experience. So the deadline for this module, you must make your first post for those three discussion questions on Manifest Destiny by the end of the day on Sunday, August 20th. Um, and you should also read everyone else's posts. Once you make your first post, you will be able to see other posts that have been made. Um, each group will have a chair appointed for each module's discussions. And I appoint these on a rotating basis. They will rotate module to module simply based on alphabetical order. So as the luck of the draw would have it, alphabetically, here are the chairs for module one. Blake Applewhite for group one, Michael Jones for group two, and Shanasia Newman for group three. You will be the chairs for this module, and chairs, I'm going to send you special instructions via email. Um, I would ask you just to respond and let me know you got those and that you're ready to ready for this mission, uh, should you choose to accept it, etc. Um, now, the morning after that deadline for initial post, the 21st, chairs, I'd like for you to get on the discussion boards and post on the thread that I've posted called Focus. Once you've made your initial posts, the discussion will shift onto the Focus thread. I've, I'm posting one of these for every question we're going to have in the course. And this will keep everyone on the same page. All the discussion after your initial post should take place with you replying to this Focus thread. That's how we'll keep our discussions focused, keep everyone together. Chairs, on the focus thread, you will post uh, what you see as agreements and disagreements among the different group members, issues that still need to be worked out based on disagreements people have had. Um, basically, your job, chairs, is to keep the discussion flowing and to work towards a group answer to each question. So we started with individual answers, and we want to work toward having a group answer for every question an answer that everyone in the group can agree on and get behind, okay? And chairs, it's your job to facilitate that process. So you're gonna point out areas of agreement and disagreement. You may suggest possible compromises, invite further discussion. And when it looks like those issues have started to be resolved and a consensus has started to emerge, chairs, it's your responsibility to suggest an answer, a group answer that you think everyone can agree on. You post that suggested group answer and then give everyone time to comment on that, to agree or disagree or suggest changes to that group answer. And then once everyone is on board with that answer, once everyone has agreed and all changes have been made, you're going to post that final group answer for each question chairs on another thread called the answer thread. All right. Now, I know all this seems a little bit complicated, maybe a little obscure. Uh, but you'll be surprised after the first or maybe second module, you really will get the hang of this and you'll see um, why this is necessary. All of these procedures are designed so that you can have a real learning experience, so that we can have a really structured discussion and um, give you a chance to weigh in. Again, I don't think that I, as the professor, am the fount of all wisdom. I don't think I have all the answers myself. Um, and I learn a lot from students, from your discussions, from your posts, from your answers. Um, so it's far more interesting for me, and I think it will be for you, to get the chance to weigh in on these questions, to really discuss and debate them. And don't be afraid to discuss and debate. I know you're all very nice, polite people. Everyone around here, uh, students, tend, tend to be really, really uh, lovely, nice, polite people. And sometimes I think people are afraid to disagree with other people because they think it's rude. But I know you can disagree or agree with other people in a friendly way that will help us to really learn something, that will make these exercises worthwhile, that will really help us sharpen our logic, our reasoning, 
and get to the truth uh, of history, the truth that these documents represent. And I think that's going to become a fascinating process for you. Be patient. You will learn it. I am here. I am delighted to help you. If there's anything that doesn't make sense about this process, please do not hesitate to contact me, um, chairs, or anyone else in the group. I'm very, very happy to help. And really excited about this new semester as we've completed the consolidation. Um, a lot of great things are happening, and i um, glad you're still on board with us at the new ASU. And I greatly look forward to working with you this semester. Thanks a lot.